Hey class, welcome back to our next set of notes in Unit 2, Populations. Today we'll be discussing populations in transition. Our two main items we're looking at in our uh, course exam description will be age structure diagrams and the topic of demographic transition. Uh, to begin with, we're starting off looking at a picture here of kind of a wealth disparity in uh, populations and uh, the idea that, you know, eventually uh, wealth and um, populations tend to transition through a series of steps in countries um, if they follow this typical pattern that we'll be discussing here. Um, so to start off, we'll look at some characteristics here of, of moving countries in a state of transition from a Led C developing nation, so least economically developed countries, to Med C more economically developed countries in the uh, developed nations. So the characteristics we've discussed a bit here uh, in class, but we'll continue to review things like infant mortality, um, life expectancy, population growth, that patterns that we see in these types of countries. So our developing nations tend to have higher infant mortality, lack of health care and medicine uh, tend to be contributing factors. Uh, life expectancy then also for those same reasons is shorter and population growth um, tends to be higher we'll get into because when those countries develop a little bit of health care and medicine um, their birth rates are already high and they start to grow uh, very quickly. Uh, children in the workforce tend to be higher as uh, they're needed as part of the, uh, the family structure or societal structure to provide uh, income, uh, food, uh, the basics of life. Um, access to education and health care isn't quite available, um, so that's low. Uh, resource consumption per person is, is very low as there aren't a lot of resources available. And the GDP of these countries, the gross domestic product, which is really a measure of the total value of goods and services the country provides, is also very low. Our med C countries are uh, they're, they're opposite. As we move from as we move from here to here, right? What ends up happening is these characteristics start to change. So, like infant mortality, as we get more medicine, this this metric tends to drop. As we get uh, more medicine, access to healthcare, life expectancy tends to get longer. So we're kind of moving all of these these characteristics in this direction. And as a society, as people, uh, this is where we want to go, right? We, nobody wants a high infant mortality. Nobody, no country on the planet wants that. Nobody wants a short life expectancy. Like We're all desiring to move to that end of the spectrum. Um, and it does vary the amount of time a country spends in that uh, transitional phase um, based on a lot of social, cultural, political, environmental issues. All of those things are wrapped into a country's ability to move um, from Led C to Med C at different rates. When we look at populations, we like to have uh, diagrams to kind of give us an idea of what exactly is happening in that country um, in a set period of time. So we can use this to compare how countries' population growth rates change. We have different examples of patterns of countries uh, marked out by their uh, population demographics. So uh, we like to separate them into these uh, three categories. The pre-reproductive age group, the 0 to 14 year olds, uh, fall into this category at the bottom in red. The 15 to uh, 44 are reproductive age groups fit right here. And then our post-reproductive, the 45 plus, tend to fit here. Um, these are the three general categories we categorize uh, populations into and we also split them in these diagrams into females and males on the left side and right side. So looking at this we can see population growth patterns by taking all these age groups of males and females and see what's happening inside this country. So someone like uh, Malawi here, a lot of sub-Saharan Africa as well, falls into this expanding rapidly category. When there are a higher percentage of young people at the bottom here in our pre-reproductive group compared to the, the older generations up top, uh, we tend to see an expanding rapidly situation here. As the percentage of young people decreases, so does the growth rate. So this is expanding slowly. India is still growing, but uh, not growing as exponentially as they used to be. So they've transitioned from here to here. Um, as countries continue to develop, the growth rate continues to slow. We can get countries that stabilize. So something like Argentina, if you start to see these really pretty flat sides, that means that we're kind of really at replacement fertility. The idea that 
this this next generation this next little box that pops up here is the same as the one before it so the country just kind of starts to level out at replacement fertility and has stable stable growth and then we see this population pyramid this declining one what we start to see is that actually the bottom kind of like pinches in like this and so when you see that we know there's more people in the higher generation than there is so each successive generation is smaller and smaller so the boxes at the bottom get uh, less and less and that tells us that a population is below replacement fertility and has a declining population. The next step in looking at populations in transition is starting to look at what's known as the demographic transition model or the DTM. Demographic transition model is a series of stages uh, that we put countries in based on their birth rates, death rates, and population growth. So to begin with, we'll look at uh, stage one. Uh, we'll label this as high stationary. There are other ways to phrase this, pre-industrial, uh, more kind of primitive life. Uh, what's going on in this right now, in this stage, total population is it's stabilized, it's growing, it's beginning to grow, you can see here. Uh, but for the most part, uh, the population, our population just is low, all right? The other thing to note is life expectancy, this will become more clear, uh, life expectancy is also low here. So we don't see the population life expectancy uh, peaking much over the 65 mark, which is pretty low. Uh, death rates and birth rates up here are very high uh, in this stage, which they kind of balance out. Populations are low. Uh, things like like a like a tribal um, pre-industrial civilized society, you know, that this doesn't really exist. There's really no country examples here that fit. All right, um, so this is kind of the beginnings of um, society, and we don't see this example often um, at, at all in countries. So as we move to stage two, now we start to see uh, changes occurring, and what happens in stage two? This is green line of the death rates are starting to drop here. Uh, this is important that these drop. Birth rates, they stay high right here. And then ultimately, we end up seeing what happens. All right, death rates drop, birth rates stay high, uh, population grows. All right, so population um, is this exponential growth. All right, and when we see that, uh, we know that's due again to the death rates dropping. So this would be stage two, early expanding, and this is very rapid growth. You can see by the population pyramid uh, with a very wide base. And we can also note that the, uh, the life expectancy is starting to go up. So the top of the pyramid starts to get a little higher, which means people in these populations are living longer. Stage three is our late expanding stage. When we look at the late expanding stage, this is more of an industrial industrialized stage. So the two is pretty transitional, three is industrial. Uh, what happens in three is our birth rates, if you start to see birth rates start to drop too a little bit and uh, the total population is going to continue to increase. All right? So we have an increase in total population here. Uh, but the population growth is starting to slow according to that pyramid down below that diagram. So it's slowing down. So we still have growth, but growth is starting to slow as it's not a, a rapid increase anymore exponentially. You start to level off, especially in late stages. Uh, death rates continue to drop. And uh, this is, you know, the only function really. Birth rates are dropping fast, but death rates are still dropping. So we get this increase, but it's a slow increase. So moving into stage four, we're going to look at uh, a population that starts to fall into the low stationary phase. And the low stationary phase is just telling us that population begins to level off. So this becomes uh, stable in total population at the end. You can kind of see these straight sides, maybe even a little bit of decline at the end. Um, birth and death are equal, so these balance out. Birth and death rates, and that causes this population to stabilize. Um, so overall, population growth equals uh, stable, at least, at least by the end of this phase. So typically, populations will, we know populations go through these four phases. Uh, the confusing part is sometimes you get this stage five. There are some um, people that debate the existence of stage five as something that's, that's always going to happen and fit the model. 
uh, but it's worth discussing that a stage five uh, could be a declining phase that perhaps maybe all countries experience once they get to this, this uh, stable population. And uh, what really happens here is births, birth rates continue to fall. All right. Um, death rates are probably going to balance out here and remain stable um, because, you know, we have access to the best technology and medicine uh, for society. And so we're always going to have the best here. And so death rates are going to kind of be where they are. But birth rates can continue to fall, and that leads to an overall drop in population. So the population starts to decrease. We get a drop here. Uh, again, this is emphasized by the pinched-in bottom. Each generation that comes up is less and less people. So, you know, there could be a lot of reasons for the birth rate decline, the, the cost of raising kids, uh, demands of uh, advanced economy in terms of uh, work time and jobs and having fewer workers is a, a productivity concern for an e uh, economy in the long run, not having enough people to fulfill the jobs needed in society to replace um, to replace the workers who are aging out. So you can see how this the stages of transition are a function of birth and death rates. And again, there's a lot of social, political, uh, economic factors that play into why these birth rates and death rates start to fall at each one of these phases. The last thing I'd like to point out to you is a demographic transition, uh, actually being able to see these population pyramids in motion. So these, these kind of age diagrams, when we look, um, again, the males are on the left, females are on the right, and we can see their populations change. So the question here is India is aging like Japan. Uh, so we can look to Japan as a more developed nation than India and see like, all right, is Japan's pattern that we've actually observed going to fit with the prediction of what would happen with India's population. And what you start to see is that, yeah, so Japan, we see all this, all the stages of transition we've talked about. They go from a wide base to uh, a slow growth to stable flat sides to declining in the end. So you can see it kind of like pinches down in there. Um, so we have a declining population. India, if you look, wide base starts to stabilize a little bit. So we have slow growth. And the prediction model indicates that, yes, they're going to continue to um, shift in their dem demographic transition to a point where they would be stable and perhaps declining um, by the end of this, uh, this simulation here.